Hello, Bobcats and all my other OCPS teachers out there. Today, I'm going to be doing a little video for Canvas site admins, so people that have access to your whole school. And to give you a heads up, you'll know if you have this little admin icon on your navigation panel if you have that access. So for any of your kind of admin features, which are mostly monitoring other teachers, making sure things are submitted, jumping into classes, and checking some analytics data, you're going to find all of that stuff right here. So you're going to click on that first. And then you'll have your school name will be listed right here as well. So you'll click on that. This will open up your admin panel for all of the things you can do in your school and all the school accounts. So you'll notice right away, the first thing we see is a list of all of our courses. It is obviously going to be a lengthy list. Um, because of the way uh, Skyward transfers information into Canvas and creates courses. If you're looking for a specific course, you can search by the teacher's name right here. Um, so for example, I was spending a lot of time in Coach Gayton's class today helping him with something. So I can just type his name up at the top, my list will automatically reload, and then I'll see all of Gayton's courses. Now one thing you'll also notice here is this is all of his courses going all the way back into previous years. So another thing we can do to save ourselves some time, it's kind of an advanced trick, but it's useful. Up at the top is our search terms. If we add an ampersand, which is the and sign, and put published equals one, that will show us only the courses that he has that are actually published right now. So in other words, only the ones that students can actually see. So this will bring my results down to stuff for just this year for the most part, and that'll help me sort through some of those responses. So now I don't see all the previous year stuff. So that and published equals one can help you pare this list down if you're noticing too many results. From here, if I click on one of these courses, it's going to go ahead and take me into that course. So let's go ahead and pick one of the ones that's for this term here. Semester 2, 1920, and we'll do this one. So if I go in here to his Semester 2, 1920 course, I'm going to have a lot of features that I wouldn't normally have. First of all, I can access the course, which historically you wouldn't be allowed to do unless you're the teacher. So I have access to that right here. I can go to his announcements page, I can go to his assignments, I can even go to his gradebook and see what's going on there. So from all those pages, you'll be able to get a lot of information about his course. I can also access analytics about his course, so I can see how many students have accessed it, I can see what work they've actually done on the course, and see what kinds of things are being used right now. So we can see here that we started to get some peak page views, but really even that's only you know 208 views depending on the size of his class, we may want to see more or less than that. This is going to show me from February 2nd all the way to April 5th, and you'll see how many page views each student had. And I can also sort this by page views if I want. By default, it's going to sort by name, but I can also sort by page views to see who's been the most active. Now, I can also go into, like I said, his grade book, and I can check and see what those student grades look like from here and see how active we've been with grading. So now we're seeing that there aren't a ton of grades in here, but again, this is new, so this is only going to show for the current quarter. Um, so maybe if we wanted to see old grades, we can go to filters and add a grading period filter. And now I could go to his previous quarter grades. So I could go to quarter three and see what those grades look like. Now I can see the previous quarter grades for those students. Again, that option was in view, filters, grading periods. I may also want to add sections as a viewable choice because this is going to be class periods. So now I can see his three different class periods that are in the same course and I can filter down by there. So if I have a parent contact me and say, hey, my son is in this course and his grade doesn't make any sense. Can you tell me what it is? Then I can access the grades like that. So those are some of the basic things you can do once you're in a course. You might find there's some things you can't do while you're in a course. So it's worth noting that you actually can add yourself as a teacher onto the course. So if you go into people, you can press the plus people button to add yourself as a teacher on this course. In order to add people to a course, you just press the plus people, and then you're going to add them by the SIS ID, and then put ID numbers. If I want to add teachers, it's personnel numbers, and then I'll choose the role of teacher. 
Uh, we might do this if we have a para or we have a co-teacher or something like that. We might add them into the course so that they can have access to the teacher side and help with student work. Or I might need to add other students in rare cases. And in that case, I would do students and then add by ID number there. So I can put a list of 480 numbers on new lines and all of those will be added into the course. Let's just say in this case, I wanted to add myself as a teacher onto this course because I wanted to help troubleshoot something. I put my personnel number, I make myself a teacher, and I hit next. You'll see this list will populate, so make sure you have the right information. And then lastly, you hit add users. When you add yourself to a course, by adding yourself right away, you'll have additional features. One of the things I typically do is now that I'm a teacher in the course, I can do what I want to do. But when I go back to my dashboard, it'll give me this alert saying, hey, you've been invited to this course. Do you want to accept? I get whatever done I need to do, and then I come in here and hit decline so I don't remain a teacher in their course. I don't need to stay a teacher in a te another teacher's course. It just adds a bunch of extra stuff to my to-do list that I don't want to deal with, so I'd prefer not to. The next thing I want to show you how to do is how to create a new course in Canvas. Some examples of why you might want to do this. You might have a club or an organization that does not match a roster in Skyward. Then you need to create a course for the teacher that's running that group. And this one's pretty straightforward. Once you're in admin, you hit the plus course button. And now let's say I wanted to make a course for my ESE support group. So I want my ESE paras and support to have access to a room that they're just going to call support room. They're going to use it in order to do open BBB sessions for the students that need support and they'll know where to go to get to them. So this is going to be for the current year, 1920. And then we're going to go ahead and hit add course. Once I've done that, I will go ahead and be able to find it in this list. So when I type in support, there's my support room right there. Quick trick, since I just created this course, there wouldn't be any teachers in it. I need to add one. I can do that from right here and save myself some page loads. So I hit the add users to a support room. And then again, as before, personnel numbers to make them teachers, add students. And now they'll be able to add their own students into that group as they would like. Those are the basic things you'll need to be able to do as an admin. One last thing you might want to do is know that there are some reports you can run. So if you go into settings, First, you can see the teachers on campus that have the different roles and what their roles might be. You can also go into the reports option and see those reports right there. These reports are going to really lay themselves out. They'll explain what they are. And if you click the question mark, then it'll show you exactly what's going to come out of that report. One that might be worth seeing right now is at the bottom, there's a zero activity report. If you wanted, you could run this report for every three or four days and see who has actually been on courses on your campus. This will return students and teachers who have not accessed a course or Canvas during a period of time. This will be really useful as we try to figure out attendance and things like that into the system. There are some others that are worth looking at. I would encourage you to look through here, find out the report. One thing to note though, when you are doing these reports, they take a while to process on the best scenarios, especially with server load the way it is right now. I would expect these to take at least a few hours for the report to be available. You don't have to wait. Once you configure a report, you can run it and you're good. So for example, if I want to run the zero activity, I want to know for a specific time period where they are at. So I want to say all terms and I want to start on last week on Monday. I want to know how many of my students and teachers did not at all access Canvas during the week of planning that we had available. And again, you'll see at the bottom, it is running. You'll receive an email when it's done, hopefully, but it's going to take a while. When I ran this one on Friday, and that was before it was completely overloaded, uh, this started and took about three hours for me to have access to the report. 
I hope this guide helped out with how you might help support your teachers on your campus with their use of Canvas if you are a Canvas admin. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can always reach out to me at bradley.schreffler at ocps.net. And if you have anything, I'll be glad to help out. And I hope you enjoy the journey into an admin of a digital campus.